Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, very happy uh, to uh, uh, welcome you uh, today in this uh, prestigious uh, uh, place, uh, which is uh, really uh, interesting because it has got a lot of history, and we would like to put Belgium also on the history of blockchain. You know very well that blockchain is uh, a hot topic nowadays, what for what uh, concerns regulations, uh, adoptions, uh, institutional, uh, it's, a, it's a real nightmare for many people. And uh, we have decided with a few people to launch an initiative called Blockchain for Belgium. And the aim of this association is to promote altogether the attractiveness of Belgium as a leading country for Belgium. So what does that mean? You know that we are many countries in Europe and that today regulation is taking place everywhere. And uh, there is also a competitive regulation. Some countries are better than the others regarding tax, regarding uh, uh, employment, regarding the adoption of the system. And we would like, in fact, with initiative, this initiative to set up something really important for Belgium. If we have a look at what it does represent today, when you look at the forecast, you would look at innovation growth forecast by cost reduction and new business. You got the figures of Gartner you see that the figures are really exploding. When you look at the blockchain business value forecast, it's exploding. When you look at the future, the future is definitely Web3. When you look at the blockchain engineer search, it's increasing. When you look at the Belgian citizen owning cryptocurrencies, according to the ECB, it's not me, it's the ECB, it's uh, Christine Lagarde, says that already 10% of the Belgian do own crypto. So it's not a, a small uh, side uh, phenomenon. But what, we really, uh, what is really important and impacting Belgium is when you look at the figures, the most important figures are here. When you look at the funding per year of tech companies with a blockchain offering, when you look at the investment through your years in Belgium compared to what has been done in Europe, with uh, figures from, from the University of Antwerpen, you look that Belgium accounts in 2021 for 0.08%. Uh, 2022 is much better, you got 0.84%. So that means that Belgium is nowhere. It's absolutely nowhere. And we've got to be really aware of that, is that many companies that would like to set up a crypto business in Belgium, the only thing that they do is go away. Where do they go away? They go to other countries that are much more uh, crypto friendly. Have a look at Estonia, have a look at Germany, have a look at France, even if it's quite complex also in France, but they do not stay in Belgium. So we had several objectives, that's for sure, not only to drink Belgian beers, but not for the time being. And one of the most uh, noticeable thing is that we're now setting up this group, Blockchain for Belgium, which is a group that allows us to communicate with the government directly. The go government is aware about these figures. They know very well that there is something, there is something to be done, but what has got to be done? When you look at the, the, the people or, or deciders or ministers, the people from the Senate, I remember very well the, the interview of that guy, which is a senator in France, and says, Bitcoin, where, where is uh, their, their address? I don't even know the address of the Bitcoin company, so it's uh, ridiculous. Uh, that's true, but I don't understand. So something really important for us is to communicate us the blockchain companies, through the support of the Federal Public Service Policy and Support with the government. How can we communicate? And what are we going to communicate? We've got several objectives. The first one is to discuss about policy supports on ethics, regulation, skills, and competence, bring together all the stakeholders that we can identify or that can identify themselves to us, co-animate all this community provide also to the government a blockchain map, what are we doing in Belgium, who's doing what, and how we are doing it, to collect also EU funding because Web3, Metaverse, and blockchain is really important to Europe. They're aware about it. They're aware that the United States and uh, Asia is uh, going fast and much faster than we do in Europe. And in Belgium, we're doing for the time being much at a slower pace than in the rest of Europe. So accompany also uh, the, the people with concrete actions for training, and identify the flagship projects also for investment projects from the state or from other uh, state 
owned investment companies and contribute to the uptake of blockchain by the industry and the government. I would like to give the word to Christophe Martens, which is the, the co-lead of this group. And uh, uh, Christophe is uh, product manager for MyData for the, the BOSA, and is also the co-lead of Blockchain for Belgium. And I would like you to explain us what we have done till now with our ecosystem. Hello, everybody. Really happy to be here. So how did we start it? We started like three months ago. We organized an event. It was called uh, Blockchain for Belgium event. It was on the 16th of March. It was during the uh, European um, Internet, uh, Artificial Intelligence Week, and we were able to meet, to have 40, 40 speakers, international, with a lot of people uh, online attending. Then, we started this three months ago. We achieved several deliverables. The first one is a recommendation. We organized a bit for you, organ um, a workshop with our main stakeholder, and we addressed several points. We'll present you the points later on in this, uh, in this uh, discussion. Then afterwards, we also organized a PESTEL. What the fuck is a PESTEL? PESTEL stands for political, economical, societal, technology, ecology, and legal aspect. What goes well, what goes wrong? What can we take and uptake the level in Belgium for innovation-wise? Then also, we, uh, as we have a federal in initiative, as we can see in the logo below, we work with uh, FinTech Belgium, Agoria, Walshen, Bax, and EI for Belgium. We tend also to be the, the, the voice, the communication, the communication with war with regulator at the EU level. That's why we did a survey with the, the Belgian ecosystem that we were able to meet and to stand. At the moment, we have more than 200 uh, people uh, attending. Several task forces have been identified and we were able to provide more than uh, 25, uh, no, for 57 uh, proposals for the European Innovation Council. So it's going quite well. In three months, we are quite happy for this and uh, I will explain you in a few slides uh, what we did. So Mark, what we did uh, for the private sector? Yes, for sure. So, once again, I would like to stress the point that we are just in between the companies and the government. So, it's a unique initiative that the government has launched, not really yet uh, uh, officially, but it will be done in the few coming weeks, I think. And it's just setting up communication channels with the governments and the blockchain companies. So, if you want to set up your company somewhere else and in Belgium, maybe you should think about doing it in Belgium because we're working hard on it. And why I identified two main task force, one which is innovation in the private sector and one for the government. So innovation in the private sector, we have to write down a few recommendations. First of all, about the attractiveness of Belgium, not only by the, for the beers and also for the waffles and other things, the muscles, but also for the, the blockchain industry and how we can retain uh, the smart people or brains that are for the time being going to other countries. Maybe I Thank you. Uh, we will set up also a benchmarking just to know what our countries are doing, what is doing Belgium, how we are positioned. We, when you've seen the figures, it's quite uh, uh, relevant to see that Belgium is for the, for the moment nowhere and we would like to increase that percentage and to make it something important in the years to come. Creating an ecosystem, that's exactly what uh, Christophe uh, Nathanel, which is here, who is here and uh, we would like to thank uh, Nathanel also for his tremendous work. Setting up this ecosystem is a real, real difficult thing because we have so many different initiatives and we would like to group them all under the umbrella of blockchain for Belgium. Education, when you're talking about education, it's not only education of the people uh, that you know, but it's also education of the government, of the parliamentaries, so that they know what we are speaking about. And for the moment, we notice that Talking to them is always difficult because they always think about uh, 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 information that are not always correct when they're speaking about money laundering, when they're speaking about uh, uh, climate change and so on. We know that it's partly true, but we know that we have many solutions to address, but one of them is going through education. And we've got a nice platform in Belgium called DigiSkills that has been set up to give skills to people uh, and could be also interesting to give skills uh, to set up to, to improve the skills about blockchain. And for sure the legal aspects because you know very well uh, that the, the new technology and the metaverse are giving to new case, new legal aspects, uh, which is exactly uh, an NFT, what is uh, a metaverse, or are you going to cope with uh, legal cases? Uh, we have heard about uh, someone speaking about sexual harassment in the metaverse, or are we going to regulate that? Or are we going to, to make laws about that? Uh, then the another group is, subgroup is promoting the use of blockchain in integration in the economy. And the last one is the taxation. How could we uh, uh, tell to the Minister of Finance that uh, maybe uh, making a zero 
5% crypto tax in Belgium could attract people as they do in other, country, for in, a, in other sectors. For instance, in Belgium, for those who don't know, we are also already a tax haven for the film industry. We are also a tax haven for the people who want to sell their company. So if you got a nice blockchain company and you made billions, you can come in Belgium and sell, that, sell your shares without being taxed because we don't have any tax on uh, the increase of value of your shares. So that's why we see a lot of people coming here in Belgium, setting up their residence here in Belgium and selling their company. So maybe we should think about a new, new things about, uh, around that that could attract people also in Belgium. And the second thing, I let uh, Christophe speak about the government because it's more on the government side. Thank you, yeah, thank you. So the government side, what's happening? So I discussed with a lot of uh, directors, SPF manager, ma minister, and stuff like this. They are all into the narrative of pump and dump. So there is a lot of education that needs to happen right now. It's not about NFT and stuff like that, but what are the societal things that we can do in order to change the way we are doing this? With the promise of blockchain, about trust, transparency, tempo, um, tempo proof, and stuff like this, that you all know better than me. So we identify several use cases. Those use cases are proposal. And the way we are doing, going to do this is with the ecosystem. So basically, several task forces will be organized, and the, the idea is that we will, will organize co-creation uh, work, uh, workshop session with the ministry there to present them blockchain, and then to see for a specific vertical, like mobility. Let's bring brands together and see what is, uh, what is feasible, and also see with uh, the European Innovation uh, Funding Platform what kind of money we can have in order to promote, promote blockchain technology within the government. So education and uh, really about innovation. And for those aspects, there is the SSI aspect, very important. I was just discussing with some guy from Synapse previously, the digital wallet also. So you all know MetaMask. You also have a wallet coming in and popping in the whole EWAP. How can we fit the Web3 wallet with the, the government wallet directly? We have uh, the data aspect, the consent, so the real promise of Web3. We are the owner of, the, of our data directly. The certification engine, so track and trace basically with time stamping, traceability. Simplification administrative, of course, because we reduce the middleman, another promise of blockchain technology. It was that aspect. Financing, SME financing, it was a hot topic. So we did several uh, concept notes, and once uh, one of the proposal, and directly proposal that we would like to, uh, to start, but uh, it's uh, open to the state secretary to, to choose, is to basically s put a platform which will be transparent about the, um, the public allocation in core money, and then let people directly see and invest or not. So reduce the barrier to entry. So your mom with Unvot Ewok can easily go and plug your wallet and directly uh, yeah, invest in, a, in promoting a blockchain project, which are labelized with your expert, like uh, Florian Arnaud and other, where they have the timestamp, uh, the, the, the stamp that say, okay, this is a leg, uh, leg, uh, legit accountant or fiscalist or whatever. Then there is also the voting system, also a topic for it now. Infrastructure, you all know about those like Swift, Lazarus, and all those, those guys. There is also a lot of things happening in the web right now. So this is really crucial that we, we improve our uh, data infrastructure. And then, of course, all, of it, uh, um, all the aspects regarding ESG, so climate, um, certifi uh, authoritative certification for enterprise. So what the fuck does that mean? Basically, when a company is uh, doing some business, no, the law make it more that the, those companies need to prove what they are doing. Is it uh, okay for the climate? Is it okay for the, the supply chain and stuff like this? So more and more promises are, uh, are, um, are a must right now. So now let's, uh, let's stop with the blah blah and uh, all the stuff. Let's go to concrete action that we propose and that we were able to identify. So Mark, let's speak about those actions. So the, the small group that we set up already wrote down a few recommendations that we would like to make uh, to the government. And uh, hello, uh, Hugo. So it's always a pleasure uh, to see you. Uh, we've got Hugo here, who's the ambassador of El Salvador, that will explain us how we can make Belgium uh, be a better place uh, to uh, develop blockchain business. Uh, we wrote a few recommendations about education and communication. It's one is about making a market study and benchmarking. The second one would be to write down a white book uh, explaining blockchain for the dummies, would I say, it's something really easy to understand. Uh, setting up certified training for professionals integrated in digital skills, so all the tax accountants and so on could understand blockchain or what they can do. About taxation of individuals and corporate tax, clarify accounting and tax treatment framework, framework agreement. Today, for those who know, we have a list of 17 questions that are really difficult to understand, and the taxation is not really clear, and making a clear taxation environment would be one of the key, according to us, uh, to the, the success of Belgium and blockchain. 
proposals of new mechanisms. Why not create a tax shelter? I was speaking about the film industry. We could also create a tax shelter for the blockchain companies and propose new mechanisms also as the citizen window. And uh, for sure, we all need money. Try to have new launch pad or Kickstarter uh, for the, the, the companies. Legal aspects, we know very well that we've got MLD5, MLD6, and the new regulation MICA, one and the two that is coming. And we have to find a way how Belgium could position himself, itself uh, as being a country leader by respecting the regulation, but allowing the Belgian companies to be competitive with other companies that are not subject to the Belgian law. That's one of the main important uh, uh, things, uh, most important things. Uh. So we have to define also the legal status. I was speaking about it a bit earlier, about uh, the NFT, utility coins, and define the legal status of DAO. For the integration into the economy, uh, bank account for innovative co blockchain companies, we know that it's a real nightmare for companies active in the blockchain to have a bank account. We have heard that some laws are coming in September that would allow this uh, to be already a reality. So I hope that we will have, will be uh, able to scrap that proposal uh, very soon. That will be a very good uh, news for Belgium. Uh, we think about cryptocurrency acquisition by the government. So the government would own officially crypto to make some payments or to participate in some schemes. We have to define that and to find some government use case that could uh, facilitate the public and uh, private partnerships with smaller companies that are very agile and could uh, improve uh, the, the way that the citizens interact with the, 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 the government and uh, the regulation. Attractiveness of Belgium, for sure, try to find a way to attract people to work in Belgium, finding a way maybe to reduce their uh, social uh, the charges, which are quite uh, quite important in Belgium and are not always uh, payable by smaller companies and try to make some international communications about those projects uh, through our uh, the existing communicating partners of Belgium which are the FIT, the AWEX. Uh, financing a company and supporting blockchain development, something that could be done by the states also, try to have a sovereign fund that could help increase uh, that kind of project to put the stress on the, the future. And creating for sure the ecosystem is something very important. Write down a code of conduct because we know very well that the key issue today is not to have uh, any kind of projects that are related to blockchain that are, uh, could be uh, uh, dangerous uh, for the people or too risky for the people. We've got to protect the, the consumer too. And for sure produce a website uh, which will be available very soon. As soon as we got the authorization from uh, the, the government, we will uh, officially uh, post uh, that website produce uh, and maintain an agenda of different and several events, which we will see that you've got an agenda afterwards, and propose events and a position paper. The values, for sure, and for the moment, we are setting up a, a, a board for this association, where we've got some very famous Belgian people that are active in the blockchain industry, as uh, Daniel Dusseuil and uh, other people that I always forget because uh, I'm always uh, uh, stressed when I'm speaking, speaking uh, uh, speeches. So. And you can go to the next slide, please. And the main recommendation for Task Force 2. Yes, so basically, as you, can, you understand, so first we create a think tank company. So basically, uh, it's, uh, we, ad we will advise uh, government. What you need to know is by 2024, we, Belgium, we take the pres uh, presidency of Europe. So it's a key moment right now. We need you. We need you to participate in what you are doing. The recommendation, the workshop, the ecosystem, the Belgian ecosystem, it's you, all of you. So come and join us. So basically, another one is uh, everything regarding skills. As you know, as uh, Mark mentioned uh, previously, there is a, a strong volunteer right now in Belgium to, to level up the skill, all digital skills. And for this, for this aspect, we, we are working with a lot of uh, third parties. We are going to have a system, we want a system that can uh, establish the certification of those skills for the, the next generation. Then, uh, as I, I told you, a flagship energy project. And then the last aspect, no, one of the most interest, uh, important in my eyes personally, is the ECS, uh, SSI integration. So basically, we have initiatives like EPSI, European Blockchain Service and Infrastructure, that are launched. Those, those, uh, this initiative, what does it does? It's collect the data at the government level for EU, and then plug it, plug it into a wallet. This wallet is not yet uh, connected with MetaMask and stuff like this. This is our mission to do so in order to promote attractiveness for the B2B sector. And then, 
uh, as finalization, the next step that we are going to do first, uh, we are going to organizing the task force, we present two of you. Then uh, we are selecting and we will propose the advisory board for the state secretary. In July, uh, in July, sorry, we are going to do a pestle and sweat analysis. We invite you to join. We'll uh, let you know how to do so. By mid, uh, by mid July and September, all the proposals that you have seen there are also available in a document. So you, uh, I will explain in the, the next slide. So there is a substantive work uh, that needs to be done uh, where, where you can literally put your voice on paper. By September, those uh, task force send the report. We do a plenary meeting and by, and by, the, by October, we are going to have uh, first the plan sent to the state secretary for funding at the up level and the Belgian level. But also we are going to have a big, big event where we are going to do uh, this one uh, with uh, blockchain for Bel uh, Brussels blockchain wheel, with uh, Web32, Crypto Square, and other actors active in this ecosystem uh, at the national, international level. So as you can see, we have also had, we also had a lot of uh, positive feedback from the ecosystem, from the south to the north, from the, the center of Brussels. People are quite happy because now there is a federal voice going on. And then I have uh, the call to action. If you are interested and you want to join us, we are more than 200 Belgian professionals. Come, subscribe yourself. It's on blockchainforbelgium.be and join uh, more than 200 participants in this ecosystem and make the things uh, change in Belgium. So thanks for listening. Um, don't know if we have still have time for a few questions, maybe, Antoine? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, we won't have time for questions, but I'm sure that people can come and find you during lunch break. You will still be there, right? Uh, so if, uh, if they have questions, but we are running out, out of time already. Thank you very much, thank and uh, thank you for what you do for the ecosystem. All right, so the next talk... Uh